Good day to you. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Pardon me, I thought I was ready, and uh, now I feel like I'm a little not ready. So, okay. So we are reading in the book of Luke. We are ready to read chapter 6. We are reading to understand the events, the context of what's happening and to understand what is being said, to see how that applies to us in our lives. Now last we had read um, <clears throat> chapter 5, and Jesus had been, he had healed a paralytic, and let's see, he was, he had, uh, uh, recruited Levi, the tax collector, and he had answered some questions from the Pharisees and the scribes. So this is um, <clears throat> this is some time later, and uh, like I said, this is the book of Luke, and this is chapter six and verse one. On a Sabbath, while he was going through the grain fields, his disciples plucked and ate some heads of grain, rubbing them in their hands. But some of the Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath? And Jesus answered them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry, he and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God and took and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and also gave it to those with him? And he said to them, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. So, <clears throat> the reason the Pharisees were complaining about them doing this was they looked at that as an act of work on the Sabbath, which the Sabbath, you are not, you know, in their society, you were not supposed to do any work on the Sabbath. Um, the Sabbath was... Anyway, you just weren't supposed to do any work. And depending on how some of them looked at it, some of them looked at it really strictly, as in you weren't supposed to even make any food or get yourself anything to eat. You know, it was supposed to be a day of fasting and prayer to God and, and just, you know, devoted to God, um, depending on how strict they looked at it. However, you have to remember in those days and those times there would have been shepherds that still would have been tending the flocks. There would have been people who would have still been working because some jobs some jobs don't stop. Some jobs aren't done just because everybody says it's the Sabbath, you know. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be mean. I mean, it's just a fact. You know, some jobs continue and you can't just let your animals run wild. You can't, you know, it's kind of like police. Police can't just stop to police and you know, there's there's certain jobs, certain things that occur, and, and, you know, this, God knows this, God knew this and knows this. Um, but the uh, the Sabbath was, you know, set aside for, for men, for people, and Jesus is, you know, basically, you know, pointing out to them how, you know, David went and did what was really unlawful for them to do, and yet there was no there was no problem with that and he also gave it to others and they they knew this and this was an example of you know in the right circumstances or you know d depending on what's going on you know things aren't not every rule is a hard fast drop dead rule you know i mean here was a situation where david and them had to do that i think they were on the run hiding from saul if i remember right but well we can we'll read that at some point in the future as i go through the bible i'm going to loop back around but um <clears throat> anyway um so jesus is just expressing to them again that the sabbath is made for man not man for the sabbath and he's going to continue on here um, verse 6, on another Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and was teaching, and a man was there whose right hand was withered, and the scribes and the Pharisees watched him to see whether he would heal on the Sabbath, so that they might find a reason to accuse him. They knew he was healing people, they saw this power in him, and yet this was their thought, can we catch him doing something wrong? 
that it, it's it, it's crazy to think about that if you if you saw someone who was healing people i mean truly healing people you know not some fakery or some sham you know but really doing that if you saw someone who was really healing people everywhere he went would that be your would that be your one thought would, to, to see if you could find a way to trap them i don't know but he knew their thoughts and he said to the man with the withered hand come and stand here and he rose and stood there and jesus said to them i ask you is it lawful on the sabbath to do good or to do harm to save life or destroy it and after looking around at them all he said to him and after looking around at them all he said to him the man stretch out your hand and he did so and his hand was restored but they were filled with fury and discussed with one another what they might do to Jesus well here we go back to what we've noticed in the other Gospels here he heals a man on the Sabbath he does a good work he does something good and they hate it so bad that now they're willing to turn around and plot to kill Jesus because that's what they are that's what they're doing they're plotting to see what they can do to him what how they can get rid of him or whatever you know however you want to look at that but in the other gospels we know they were plotting to kill him to get rid of him <clears throat> and that seemed in their anger that seemed perfectly fine to do that on the sabbath but it was wrong of him to heal someone on the sabbath if you can just see the problem there that is such a problem that is such a a heart problem it's a problem with the way you're looking at life and the way you're looking at things if you believe that way or if you are that way now I'm not saying you are but I'm just saying for these people these Pharisees and scribes who believed and felt that way all right I'm gonna continue on verse 12 in these days he went out to the mountain to pray and all night he continued in prayer to God and when day came he called his disciples and chose from them twelve whom he named apostles Simon whom he named Peter and Andrew his brother and James and John and Philip and Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas and James the son of Alphaeus and Simon who was called the zealot and Judas the son of James and Judas Iscariot who became a traitor and he came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon. If I pronounce any of these incorrectly, I apologize. Just doing the best I can. Who came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Jesus was famous for healing. They knew. They knew what he was. They knew he was a healer from God. They knew he was from God. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured, and all the crowd sought to touch him, for power came out from him and healed them all. And yet these are the this is the man that these people want to get rid of because he threatens their their position and their power. <laughs> It had to be some form of jealousy or something. I, I don't know. Now, anyway, verse 20, <clears throat> and this is Luke's form of the, uh, I guess, the uh, Beatitudes, and uh, this is a shorter version of the Sermon on the Mount, but there's going to be some things that Luke notes that are different. Um, it's not that they're not noting the same sermon or the same ideas and thoughts. It's just that um, they're noting different portions, different things um, that that are written down. So it's it reads. I mean, if you look at it and you try to compare the two, is like, well, these are both supposed to be exact accountings, which they're not. But if they were supposed to be exact accountings, you'd say, well, they don't agree. But they're not supposed to be exact accountings. They're supposed to be two different accountings. And if you have two people sit and hear the same things one person is going to remember and bring out the things that were important to them and then that 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 dawned in their head or that that struck them in the right way and then someone else is going to bring out the other things that they heard 
and that <clears throat> struck them and, and were important to them. So, anyway, it's just a matter of perspectives in that case. It's kind of like two people who see a car crash from two different sides of the street and they have, you know, differing stories because they saw it from different angles. It happens. Um, and we have to admit that part of life, that's, that's the way we are as people. So, uh, verse 20, the Beatitudes, And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you and revile you, and spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven, for so their fathers did to the prophets. So this is a short, a shorter version of the Beatitudes, and it's mentioned a little differently here. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. And we've kind of discussed this before. If you're poor, this this goes all the way around in several different ways, but um, if you're poor, if you're truly poor, you can still have the kingdom of God. If you're really poor, you can still be a Christian, you can still follow Jesus, and you can still be rich in heaven. You can You can have the kingdom of God. And you can be in that kingdom now here. It's a spiritual kingdom. It's not a physical kingdom. But you can be in that, that kingdom here and now. You don't have to wait. <clears throat> and if you're poor in spirit also, if you're lacking in spiritual guidance and morals and um, <clears throat> and just have not, not been a believer, have not believed... Um, you find yourself lacking in that in that situation then too you can you can come and follow Jesus and you can be in the kingdom of God now it's a spiritual kingdom that is ready and prepared for us now as well as for later <clears throat> blessed are you who are hungry now for you should be satisfied and that hunger is both a physical hunger now and then a real a spiritual hunger a spiritual hunger for for God if you want wisdom if you want to understand and know God pray and ask for that that is always in his will and study his word as best you can read Proverbs read the Gospels if you see the wisdom of Jesus in the Gospels you will understand what um, what Jesus and God is about. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. And that's because we may weep now, we may be sad in this life, we may have hard times, but there will also be good times. There will also be times when we have, you know, our friends and our family, and we will laugh. And then there's spiritually we're going to have that as well and if you are a Christian and you join with other Christians you will you will find that you have a family and friends in them even if you don't have your normal earthly family and friends and in the kingdom of God you will have a spiritual family and then blessed are you when people hate you and they exclude you and revile you and spurn you basically because you're a Christian, because you believe in Jesus. Um, your reward is great in heaven, and that's that's it's true. And um, for so they, our, their fathers did to the prophets, and that's absolutely correct too. All you have to do is read the Old Testament, and you'll see that the prophets were, a lot of the prophets were treated horribly. They were, some of them were killed, and well, we won't get into all that, but, uh, so, and, and <clears throat> we're even told to expect that. So then here, and, uh, we're going to continue on with verse 24, and Jesus goes kind of another way, but woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. 
Woe to you who are full now, for you shall be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all people speak well of you, for so their fathers did to the false prophets. So there are those in this life who they have everything. They have everything and they are full of themselves and they believe they have everything and know everything. <clears throat> now, whether they earned it or not, it's not really talking about that. It's just talking about, you know, people who are rich and then people who are full. You know, they have everything already. And it's harder for those people, and Jesus mentions this several times, it's harder for those people to humble themselves and come to God. They think they have it all, they know it all, and they're just full of that pride of life. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, they, if they do not, if they do not come to God and come to Jesus and do not humble themselves, um, it's not that you can't be rich, that you can't be full, that you can't laugh and enjoy life. It's just that if you don't humble yourself and come to God and, um, and then use what you have, you have all this to help others, then, then yeah, what are you doing? It, it doesn't make sense. It's you are, well, Jesus is going to actually get into some of that in the next verses, so... I should continue on, but, um, you know, it's difficult for, for people like that to, it's not impossible, though, because they can do it with God, all things are possible. Let me read the rest of this. I think I'm dragging us off to the side too much. All right, verse 27. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Excuse me. Give to everyone who begs from you, and from one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. Basically here, he's getting into explaining how those who do have do have can share and 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 give to others verse 32 let me scroll this down for us if you love those who love you what benefit is that to you for even sinners love those who love them and if you do good to those who do good to you what benefit is that to you for even sinners do the same and if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. But you love your enemies and do good, and lend expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. And there's so much here. But the theme, the theme is to love and care about each other, to help each other, and to be merciful and forgive each other. Lend to someone expecting nothing back. If they pay you back, then that's great. But don't, you know, don't, don't lend out expecting, expecting that because, anyway, you're just, you're just much better off not to. And, and this is this is a simple way of looking at things and of um, you know give to everyone that you can you know if someone asks try to help them if you can you may not be able they may ask you for something you can't provide but maybe you can help in some other way um, <coughs> so you know and lend without expecting anything back that is a hard thing, but you know, when you lend and you expect something back and then that person can't pay, a lot of times that causes harsh feelings and harsh problems, and it's really bad when it happens with friends and family. You're better, much, much better off to lend it, but just in your mind, just kind of consider it a gift, 
and don't expect anything back and 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 you can even tell them it's fine you know just you know pay me back if you can or if you want but you don't have to just go ahead and make a gift of it and and be done with it if they pay you back if they can and they want to then that's great That's something I've done all my life because I found out early on <laughs> that people don't want to pay you back. <laughs> uh, but, well, it's not really just that. That sounds kind of mean. But I just mean that it, it can be very hard for people to pay you back. And here, uh, Jesus just gives you the best solution. Because I, I had a problem with that as far as, you know, I would want to, but at the same time, they would say they would pay me back, and then they wouldn't necessarily do that. And so I found this to be the correct solution for me, that when I lend something, I just don't expect anything back. And it's kind of like a gift, and if they don't pay me back, if they do, it's fine. If they don't, it's fine. So, and that's just the way it is. All right, so, um... Verse 37, Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your, into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Now you notice these things. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. We shouldn't judge and condemn each other. That's not to say that if you know I lie, you can't judge my lie and say that's wrong. But it's to say, you know, but to judge the person, well, just use me and just say, but to judge me and say, oh, you know, you're, you're, you're going to hell and you don't belong, you, you, don't, you shouldn't be a Christian, blah, you know, whatever. You just, you know, you condemn that person and you say, I'm not having anything to do with you and all that. That's what you shouldn't do. It's okay to judge the action. If I hit somebody, if I lie, if I shoot somebody, I don't know if I do something wrong, whatever that may be. It's okay to judge that action and say, that's that's wrong. If I'm, well, okay, if I'm being homosexual, it's okay to judge and say, you know, that's wrong. But you don't condemn that person. We have all sinned. And committed actions that were wrong, and we know we know we have. It's, and I can't. It's that is for God to judge every person, not me. And how do I know this person? No matter what they've done or what they're doing, how do I know that next week they won't turn it around and they won't come to God? And you know, maybe someone will tell him about Jesus in the way they needed to hear it. You know, or or they'll say the right thing at the right time, and it will it will call them. So I don't want to judge and condemn that person. I want to help that person? Um, it's definitely okay to judge the improper actions, the wrong things, and to say, look, that's wrong. That's just blatantly wrong. We don't we don't do that. Um, and then forgive, and you will be forgiven. Now this is also a theme. With Jesus, we have to forgive others to be forgiven. And um, give and it will be given to you. This is all, let's see if I can explain this. This is all reaping what you sow. Because if you judge not, then you will not be judged. If you condemn not, you will not be condemned. If you forgive, you will be forgiven. This is all about that cycle. And that's all about the way God has made things to work. Because you will reap what you sow in this life, whether it be good or bad. So, you know, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. So, and if you're stingy in your forgiveness, stingy in your Givings and you're kind of you're kind of um, heaping on the judgment and heaping on the condemnation. Well, you're going to get those things back just like that. You're going to get very little forgiveness and very little, you know, and you're going to get a lot of judgment and condemnation. So I, we have to be careful 
how we're doing things and how we're looking at things um, and not you know we're, we're not the judge of other people anyway it, but again it's okay to judge actions and say look that's a wrong action I'm not going to do that my family's not going to do that my child is not going to do that you know and if you have a chance to talk to someone and say look that's not the right action if you find out someone in your congregation is doing something that's definitely wrong it's perfectly fine to you know talk to them privately in a loving way and say hey that's really bad for you that's not a good thing for you that is hurting you spiritually whether you realize it or not all right moving on because jesus is going to continue here verse 39 he also told them a parable can a blind man lead a blind man Will they not both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone, when he is fully trained, will be like his teacher. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me take out the speck that is in your eye, when you yourself do not see the log that is in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take out the speck that is in your brother's eye. And this is another example going back to the judging. Um, yeah, we can't help each other if we're running around doing the same things. So you want to make sure <clears throat> that you're not doing the same things. I mean, you can talk to them, certainly. If you know that you both share a similar problem, maybe you can work together on each other. But don't be judgmental and telling the other person how awful they are if, um, you know, if you're running around doing the same thing or doing something similar. We all have. We all have certain issues, certain problems, you know, and it's something to realize. Verse 43. For no good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. For figs are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. The good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good. And the evil person out of his evil produ treasure produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. And this is another thing that is um, a theme throughout the Gospels. That our hearts is where we produce good or evil and we have to protect our hearts and we have to fill our hearts with the word of God and the love of God and our Lord um, so that we can share that and not not share the evil not share the 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 negatives the anger the bad things so <clears throat> because you know Just like Jesus said, no good tree bears bad fruit, but no bad tree will bear good fruit. If you poison your heart and you have, you know, a horrible, um, a horrible heart due to the things that you've put in it rather than the Word of God, then you're naturally going to produce bad things. I know I've, I've done this, been through this, and I've really tried to change that a lot in the past, uh, 20 years or so um, I've really gradually just tried to change that more and more um, you try to reduce the amount of bad stuff that you're taking in and you try to take in more of the good such as the Bible and uh, things that you know are good and are uh, not um, you know not the, the negative worldly things there are good things in the world there's good things on the planet um, to take in and to appreciate and that's fine but uh, you know avoid avoid the wrong things the bad things and, and we know what those are morally we know you know uh, not to take in <clears throat> not to take in all the, the bad stuff and poison ourselves with that if you're <clears throat> pardon me if you're sitting you know and you're just constantly watching for instance porn or something else that's super negative where people are just very foul and very evil and they they enjoy doing evil 
you know, it's it's okay if you occasionally watch a movie just because it's a little odd, but but if you're always watching just super negative and bad things, that's that's hurting you inside. And the same with music. If you're always listening to music, which I used to do, I used to always listen to uh, really basically negative music. If you turn that around and start listening to positive music and it. It doesn't necessarily have to be Christian, but Christian music is better. Find find you some Christian groups or um, or songs where they're singing about the Lord and singing about things in the Bible and singing that type of stuff so that it keeps that on your mind. That'll be much better for you, and you'll take that in, and you'll take a lot more of that into your heart, and you'll produce more of that out of your heart. So... That's that's just what has been working for me, and that is what I've been doing for years now, and I keep trying to do more and more of that and weed out the bad influences. Anyway, <clears throat> I hope I haven't gotten too far off topic with that. Uh, verse 46, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you? Everyone who comes to me and hears my word and does them, I will show you what he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock and when a flood arose the stream broke against the house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the stream broke against it immediately it fell and the ruin of the house was great. And this goes back to having your foundation in God and in Jesus in the in the word the Bible that's where our foundation needs to be Jesus needs to be that cornerstone for our lives that keeps us true and straight and keeps our foundation in alignment so that it holds up the structure of our house our life um, <clears throat> because he is that cornerstone for us and from from him, from God, that's where our morals and and everything comes from. Um, every good thing, whether it be spiritual or or moral or whatever, comes from God. Um, so it's very important that we remember that and that we stay focused on that. And gradually in our lives, it takes time. I didn't immediately start out doing like I should. I had times in my life where I did better than others, but uh, <clears throat> especially in the past 20 years, I've tried to focus more and more. Um, maybe. Anyway, I say the past 20 years has probably really been longer than that, but still, nonetheless, over my life, I've just gradually tried to focus more and more on God and the Lord and trying to do <clears throat> the good things, the right things, that we should do. And if you do that, I really think it it will change you from the inside out, and it will change your world and everything in your world by doing that. All right, so I won't I won't keep preaching at you there on that, but it will. It'll make a huge difference for you. So that was uh, Luke chapter six. Uh, next session we'll do chapter seven. And I know this went long, there was a lot to talk about, and I may have wandered off a little bit or, you know, talked too long, but uh, you can definitely let me know if that's the case, alright? Okay, hope you have a wonderful day, and God bless you.